Ariel, thank you for the donation. Quick, guys. What was the seventh word of line 15 on page 24? I don't want my Ami game manual anymore. It was... Meow. <laughs> Amiya Aranya. <laughs> Oh, Hamia! Hello, hello, everybody! Meow, meow, meow! So, yeah, uh, life update. I got abducted by aliens. Ayla Mal. What did they do to me? I think they just looked at my brain. Maybe they saw that sauce in my brain and they were like, um, num, 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 num. What weird creepy video games did they leave you with after abducting you? Ah, uh, this one weird game called, uh, Helios. It's really strange, really strange. All right, you guys, the subject of today is DRM and like copy protection and stuff. So, so just so you guys understand that, if I sound stupid, I apologize in advance. And what is DRM? It's digital rights management. So it's like a very um, boomer method to prevent like copying or, you know, illegal distribution. Of They're kind of boomer, yeah. I'm, so I'm sorry to say, uh, but these deals would come with the game. And then the one on the left is from, um, The Secret of Monkey Island. Uh, but the Dial Pirate is a cool example of something that's, it's like thematic with the game. I like how it's called Dial Pirate, like you're calling an actual pirate to help you pirate the game. <laughs> Alright, what's next? What's next is... <coughs> so, so the, bl the blue one up here is from a game called Legend of the Secret Jet Set Star Tropics on Monkey Island. Yeah. So this one's really simple. You would just look at the um, manual and enter a word based on the prompt on the screen. If you get it incorrect, it blew up your Amiga. So that was a really common one. That one in particular, so that's from Jet Set Willy. You would have to write a scientific paper on machine learning. So very complicated stuff. I don't really understand it, but it's like... I, I don't know if this is... I mean, it... It's essentially DRM, or it's essentially research, or it's essentially copy protection, but I don't know if it was originally intended as that, or just intended to be like... Research, or a fun little element to be added to the gameplay that's, you know, outside of being a PC game. They wanted to add like a research aspect to it, so that's pretty cool. But Leisure Suit Larry had an interesting way of protecting themselves from minors, consisting of calling a guy named Manual. So this sounds really cool. Manual is like a tourist guide to the island that the game takes place on. So it's really immersive in that sense. It's like it's like a little tourist info type of thing. Um, and it is it is like a copy protection measure, although I think it also had uh, you know, an age check thing. There's free um and there's free passes for a show with a character in the game. And Manual had a bunch of different passes. And they each have a number on them. So you have to look up the right number to see the show. And if you use the wrong number, you get arrested by ARL for using a counterfeit ticket. And it's game over. Lol. <laughs> so it's really immersive in that sense. Well, this one I have here is for Leisure Suit Larry 3. And so there would be numbers and letters, and they co correspond with a row of four, four colors. So when you load the game, it would give you a letter and number combo. Like, okay, so the, the combo is, you know, 2A, and then you have to go to column 2A and enter those colors into the game. Um, so it would be blue, purple, green, blue, red, green, blue, purple, blue, green, blue, red, purple, green, red, blue, red, purple, red, green, green, purple, green, purple, red, green, purple, purple, red, green, blue, red, purple, purple, green, blue, green, purple, red, red, green, purple, blue, green, in the A1 so it's column. And then it would start the game. If you get it wrong, you have to do it all over again. Or everything explodes. I once played a game that was region locked, so to check if you were Japanese, had a little language exam at the start. A uh, Japanese dating sim game called Love Plus. Luckily, it wasn't that difficult. And in the game, if you're using like a pirated copy, or you couldn't speak Japanese very well, all the girls would just like hate you, but none of them would date you. They would all refuse to date you. Oh no! It's silly. Do you play a lot of dating sims? I've never played a date. Well, I'm, unless you count like Persona 3. I mean, that's not a dating sim. It has like dating sim elements, though. Yeah, it's a DS game. So this sounds really based. Uh, the entire manual of this game is presented as a guide to the island that the game takes place on. One of the ways they do copy protection is um, there's a gym locker in the game. I mean, uh, spoilers for Leisure Suit Persona 3, I guess, some of the puzzles. There's a gym locker, and so you have to look through the, the manual to um, find the advertisements for these different businesses. 
and you have to find the pages that they're mentioned on and then those page numbers are the combination to the locker and then there's another level of copy protection which is if you're using like a pirated copy all the girls would just like hate you and none of them would date you they would all refuse to date you and then it blew up your ds lol and now we're going to the next one which you probably maybe have heard of do you guys know about lol so it was released in 1985. So this is this is like nightmarish, okay? This lens lock would detach spider legs, maybe my ahoge, which is crazy. Um, so it's a row of prisms that are uh, arranged vertically. The beginning of the game would give you a two-letter code, and then um, it was it was distorted. So you had to look at it through this plastic piece of cardboard paper and be able to read the code. So, sometimes it was difficult to get it to work. Sometimes you didn't get the right lens. Yeah, sometimes it just was so... And yeah, yeah, everything explodes. Magnets, how do they work? We don't know. We don't know how they work. Um, I think scientists are still working on that one. <laughs> okay, more, more physical disc stuff. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Robocop's <laughs> dongle. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Okay, I almost didn't include this. Okay, this Robocop freaking dongle, I couldn't freaking figure it out. But Robocop 3, it was for the Amiga 600, which is a Commodore system. I think how it works, I think, is the program just checks to see if the dongle is present or not. And if it wasn't present, Robocop shows up at your house and kills you. <laughs> would you download it, Amiya? That's a good question. Um, I think that would go against policy because I do, do work with a corporation. <clears throat> you would download an Amiya? Okay. Okay. It wouldn't be the same, but I accept. I, I accept this answer. Um, alright, let's take a look at the non-game DRM. So the first one is highly unusual. Highly unusual. It's called the Cat Genie Litter Box. So this is a self-cleaning litter box. The litter box uses soap cartridges. So when they have to be replaced, it can detect that you're using a non-Cat Genie brand soap thingy. <laughs> soap cartridge. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't trap the cat inside the box, no. <laughs> Everything explodes. And then, Robocop shows up at your house and kills the cat. So, you have to use their, their DRM protected soap, okay? <laughs> it's exactly like the printer cartridges, exactly like the printer cartridges. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for coming today. I am going to end off for today. I'm gonna go eat some food. Bye-bye!